all of the, uh, the resource protection. One, wetlands on the property, all those high value uh, resources that have been identified by the town, as well as the 250 and 100 foot buffers surrounding it. The planning board asked at the very beginning, and also the Conservation Commission, uh, they had asked us to identify the trails that are uh, existing on the site. Now, there are trails and there are trails. There is a very heavily used cross country ski trail and mountain bike trail that runs roughly east west of this, the property on the 100 foot uh, Central Lane Power Company easement. Uh, that's shown as the, uh, the dotted line that runs through there. Uh, there are also a number of other pro uh, trails that come uh, from the Gabriel's property uh, in this location. Uh, we don't know exactly where the trail uh, that crosses this northern spit of land is located, uh, but we know what's out there and we know it's also going to be preserved as part of the open space system. Uh, the town land is up in here, it would be very easy to link that one in if that could be made part of a longer uh, open space system. Um, you probably can't see it very well, but there is a loop trail system that's out there right now that was partially formed when uh, uh, Mr. Perez had logged the area several years ago in, in uh, cooperation with some of the abutters. It was established. There are some crossings that are uh, in extent right now. Uh, unfortunately, that trail system uh, will not be there after the subdivision is constructed. However, that same loop system will still be present by virtue of the fact of the sidewalk being constructed parallel to the roadway. Uh, we have about 10,000 linear feet of uh, roadway, roughly the same amount of sidewalk. So in terms of actual walking area, uh, there's almost 2,000 linear feet of paved walkway. Uh, we're showing roughly 3,500 linear feet of east-west connection uh, and roughly another uh, 2,900 to 3,000 linear feet of trails that will either be constructed or preserved as part of the development. We are showing on this plan a couple of trail links here and through here. It will be uh, constructed as part of the development. Uh, we feel it's necessary uh, in order to make some linkages, to relocate some trails, for example, at the end of Lorenzo Lane, which will be built as part of phase one. There's a very well-defined trail that goes uh, down to the end of the Woods Road through the Red Pine Stand and out to the, uh, the east-west power line trail. And that trail will be relocated. In fact, we've even allowed uh, a separation between the two lots at the end of the road there to accommodate that trail. Similarly, uh, there's another trail over here that will have to be re relocated, uh, but there's a lot of land out there, especially in some of the, the 100 foot and 200 foot buffers to accommodate the trails. Uh, there's an ample opportunity, of course, to do a lot of other trail construction. This is the, the ones that we feel are really critical right now uh, to establish the intent of the overall project to provide access uh, in and around the major part of the subdivision. We have also had uh, a quite a bit of discussion so far with the, the Boy Scouts, Troop 30, who of course owns this property down here. One of the conditions that uh, was put upon the, the land uh, that uh, Juan had traded uh, with the Boy Scouts was that there had to be a provision for public access between Dominicus Crossing Road, the main thoroughfare running through the property, down to the Boy Scouts. Uh, we've indicated on a plan that we've uh, submitted to Mr. Adams from the Boy Scouts indicating a point starting right here going down to the Boy Scouts land. The intent is to provide them with a 25 foot uh, access easement that will provide them uh, a way to get down to their property without having to either go through the wetlands uh, or to come off uh, uh, a rather bad turn in Sawyer Road over here. Um, so that's the open space plan for the development. Uh, we're also showing, of course, when we'll get into this in a lot more details, uh, some very special types of areas as we go through the property. The, the middle of the, uh, the roadway in two locations has what we're calling eyebrows, uh, where the road will split. It'll be a one-way system in either direction, a way of calming the traffic down, discouraging through traffic, providing a focus for the neighborhood, all things that we've talked about in the past. Uh, we've gone out and surveyed these locations. We found that there's large rock outcrops in some places and nice vegetation that will provide a nice focal point for those neighborhoods that will be part of the open space system. There's also a small town green that will be built as part of phase one, roughly a half an acre in size, overlooking the marsh, and we feel that will be a very nice focal point for the community. 
I know that uh, Mr. McGovern and uh, some initial conversations he's had with, um, uh, with town staff has indicated that he would like to see some sort of a recreation area developed as part of the project. Uh, we would maintain that by donating 100 acres of land and by making sure that there is, uh, you know, roughly, uh, by the time we count in the sidewalks and the, the open space systems, uh, you know, close to three miles of trails the, the development, there's going to be an ample opportunity for outdoor active recreation uh, on the project. We're also showing places where the trails extend off the property. And obviously, we can't make any assurances that those can continue to be used. Those are uh, now extending on to the Jordan property and over to Elizabeth Farms, the good graces of those residences. Uh, at this point, we're just showing them, recognizing that people do use them at this, at this time. Um, the question was raised as to the phasing of the project, uh, knowing that we do have a substantial number of units. Um, how would they be built? What phases would various things happen in? Uh, one of the things which we did not give the planning board as part of our application was an indication of the lot sizes. This diagram here breaks the uh, 96 lots down into five different size ranges, just to give you a sense as to where the development uh, is going to be concentrated, uh, where the lots are going to be uh, uh, of various sizes. Phase one, of course, uh, is the area that we've always been talking about, um, just off of Wells Road, this large area to the north of Juan's existing property. Uh, it will go uh, uh, to this point right here in phase one. Uh, most of the lots, as you can see by our color code here, are between 15,000 and 30,000 square feet. Um, just to give you a sense of uh, what that uh, is like, these are the you know, fairly tight-knit neighborhood, uh, in keeping with the theme that we've developing, been developing all along, to develop a series of neighborhoods of different character. Um, phase two would be the continuation um, of the roadway uh, uh, to this point right here, just opposite Elizabeth Farms. Uh, the lots there are a little bit gener more generous in size, some lots in the, the 30,000 to 60,000 square foot uh, range. Phase three then would continue on. Uh, most of the lots in there are in the 60,000, quite a few of them in the back are more than 80,000 square feet. Um, one of the points that was raised the last time we appeared before the board, I think we've talked about this already, is to make sure that somehow uh, we are able to extend the project through at some point in the future, both over to Layton's property down here and over to Billy Jordan's property on the east. This is not to say that we're anticipating any development. Uh, we've had several conversations with both of these landowners. At this point, we haven't heard any indications that they intend to do anything in terms of developing their property. Uh, we are simply providing the town with the opportunity to carry the road through, to extend the utilities, to extend the roadway through, uh, to make a, a natural, logical intermeshing of both properties in case there was the need uh, or the desire to interconnect the properties at some point in the future. Um, we are indicating in this plan also the location of the affordable housing development. As you know, there is an affordable housing component. We uh, wrestled uh, for quite a while of how to accomplish uh, meeting the criteria of the planning board. Uh, as you know, there's a number of options that were before us. We are suggesting, as we indicated the last time, a hybrid of sorts. Uh, we're calling for uh, two uh, single-family attached units that would be on individual lots, a zero lot line arrangement. We've indicated a very preliminary uh, architectural elevation and a floor plan of what those two units, both here in phase one and over here in phase two, might look like. In addition to those four units, there would also be two uh, units that would be set aside for moderate income households. Those would also be scattered throughout the development, one down here uh, and another one on the northerly part of phase two. Uh, that in an overview uh, is the, the open space, the wetlands, and the phasing of the prop, uh, project. Uh, let me go in with this plan right here about the access location and some of the concerns that we had, uh, which led us to conclude that
Okay, what we've done here, uh, these plans, by the way, are at a scale of one inch equals 200 feet. Uh, this drawing is at a scale of one inch equals 40 feet, roughly five times the size of this drawing here. This piece is this lower end of the southern part of the site that encompasses most of phase one, which stops up about here. Um, we've indicated on this plan uh, the access road that comes in on the Wells Road and goes uh, in a curvilinear fashion, avoiding wetlands, uh, cutting through uh, a fair amount of ledge coming off of Wells Road, and then coming to a crossroad, at which point development begins in earnest. Uh, the common open space we've indicated is located over here. Uh, this is Juan Perez's house right here, his garage, and the, uh, the barn, which he has a single apartment right now, which would be developed under the terms of this application to a second apartment above the, uh, the barn. There was a, a lot of concern uh, raised by uh, the planning board. I know that Susie Terrian has met with us a number of occasions. We've had a lot of discussions with her. She was at her office uh, several weeks ago to talk about the details of the plan. Um, initially, uh, we had looked at the access drive coming in on the, on the west side of Juan's uh, apartment as a possible point of access. Uh, and in your application package, there was a letter uh, that was submitted to us uh, back in 1988, I believe, from Jack Murphy, who's been our traffic engineer all along. Um, he evaluated this location. Uh, at that point, we did not own any additional land over here. Um, he established that at 30 miles an hour, which was the speed limit posted along Wells Road, uh, that there was probably adequate sight distance. Um, to, uh, to the right and to the left that could be accomplished by some modification to the edge of the roadway. Um, that, that application letter is in the package and I won't go into the details of it right now. However, he went on to say that uh, because it's a very marginal situation, back then we were just starting to do overall planning for the property. Uh, he really, in good conscience, could not recommend that we use that as the main access into the property. Um, I believe the, that he used the standards uh, of height and setback in terms of defining uh, how he measured the site distance. I will verify that though with Jack Murphy and present that before you at subsequent meetings before the planning board. Um, as a result of the concerns that Jack had, knowing that there was uh, a possibility in our experience in dealing with the Cape planning board um, uh, that, make, that made us very wary of making sure that we had adequate site distance. We had a lot of discussions with Mr. Uh, Perez about looking at other places where we might successfully enter the property. Uh, and in a subsequent evaluation of the land on either side and in conversations with Mr. Mr. Layton, found that there was a piece of property uh, on the east side of uh, Sudsitarian's property where we could acquire um, an access way in um, it would require uh, some earth moving, some blasting, um, but we felt that in the long run uh, it would provide the overall development uh, with the safest way to come into the property and maintain the safety along Wells Road. Uh, the site distances are recorded in Jack Murphy's letter. He does report that uh, of the two options, this one by far and away is a superior one. In fact, he's uh, still uh, not in good conscience recommend this one feels that this one uh, clearly provides sight distance to the left and to the right. Um, I know there's some concerns, some ongoing concerns uh, that Susie has raised. And uh, in terms of meeting those, those concerns, uh, we've met with her. We've provided her with a series of four cross sections that we cut through here. In fact, we're, we have them here tonight if you're interested in looking at them to show what the grade would be if the person was in the back of her house looking across uh, through our proposed road and the road cut. Um, as a result of that type of analysis, we've indicated to her that as part of the construction of phase one road, we will be constructing an earth berm on the back side of her property, it even be on her property if that was the case uh, where we provide the most effectiveness. Uh, that would be planted with an evergreen uh, buffer, probably a combination of, of evergreen trees. And we felt that with that material right there, coupled with uh, the earth berm, possibly reinforced by a fence, that uh, from her vantage point, she would be 
uh, have minor impacts of the road on the enjoyment of the back of the property. Uh, on the east side of the, the cut that we're going through to come into the property, you're really not going to be even seeing a, uh, a car until you get around to the corner here. And if that was the case, we'd be certainly willing to put a fence up to make sure that her privacy is preserved on all sides. Um, that, in a nutshell, is the, the access situation. Um, I know that there's certainly a lot of technical concerns that we could have Jack Murphy uh, address if there was some concerns about the specifics of the location. Um, but for right now, an overview, that's where we're at relative to that uh, one issue. Um, at this point, I'll, I think I'll turn it over to Les Berry, who uh, will go over some of the details of the utility systems just in an overview situation. Then we'll glad to answer a question or two. Okay, quickly, uh, what I want to talk about was the utilities and the engineering. We've put quite a bit of uh, effort into the engineering at this point. We have over 10,000 linear feet of roadway. It's a 20-foot wide roadway with curbing and a sidewalk on one side. And it's rather irregular pattern, and, and we will get into the layout later on, but it's a, there's a lot of thought between the engineering and the landscape architecture and appearance and function of the road that went into, into that uh, effort. As far as the other utilities goes, we're proposing a pump station to serve the project located on Wells Road uh, at that particular point. It would pump sewage up the hill on Wells Road to the top of the hill where it would flow, would put a gravity sewer in and flow down to Spurwink Road, which would take a right on Spurwink Road and flow to the existing sewer that feeds into the uh, main pump station into the treatment plant. Uh, the phase one of the project would be served by principally gravity sewer to that point. After phase one, we would have then a force mains and low pressure uh, sewer system to serve the remainder of the uh, subdivision. And uh, that gets to be a rather complicated design, and uh, we'll be going over that with the town engineer and, and answering questions of the planning board. The uh, water system, at currently you have a 16-inch water main in Wells Road and a 16-inch water main in Sawyer Road. We'll be connecting the... Uh, two water mains with an eight inch water main, so uh, there's uh, plenty of water supply out there to serve this project. We will be providing hydrants, as shown in the, uh, the red dots, yeah, red dots, uh, throughout the, uh, the project. We'll be providing street lights, which is shown as the yellow dots, and uh, throughout the project, and uh, it's, it's rather complicated, so I really don't think, uh, I, I, I assume you don't want to get into it tonight. <laughs> you assume for okay. <laughs> With the board's permission, I'll I'll just start going through the completeness checklist, which hopefully is, is in your memo. Starting with the checklist for preliminary subdivision review, um, I've identified item one as partially complete, and that's because uh, the survey that's submitted shows that a portion of the subdivision is owned by the Maine Summer Institute, and the rest is owned by the Neighbor Land Association. And I believe the same person person is involved in both, but. I think it needs to formally be clarified. Mm -hmm. In addition, I've sent the deeds to the town engineer, to the town attorney for review. And again, I, I think it's just a formal clarification that's needed because um, the land is, is owned mostly in the name of an individual rather than in the name of the corporation that's, that's the developer for this project. So I'm still waiting for a letter from the attorney, but I don't see it as a huge hurdle, but just something that should be clarified. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't identified anything that might be incomplete uh, under items 2 through 7B. I don't know if any members of the board have any questions with those items. I, I have a question, and it comes up later, um, regarding the, the entity that is the applicant, the owner. Mm -hmm. Um, you just mentioned that it was a corporation. Is, is Nabuck Land Associates a corporation? 
such and if so who are the principals or, or officers I don't know if it's a corporation it, it's just the applicant my understanding that is it yeah it is a corporation to the best of my knowledge, you can't have a corporation in Maine without having ink or limited or company or corporation in the name of it. So that doesn't look like a corporation to me, unless it has comma ink or something after it as a proper name. Also, my, my question pertaining will come up later in, in financial capability. It, it talks about principles and it's interesting. Who are the principles of, of NABOC? Mm -hmm. Do we have an answer to that? The principles of the Nabuc Land Associates? Needs to approach the podium. Would you, excuse me, would you please approach the podium and identify yourself? <clears throat> My name is Juan Perez and I live at 53 Wells Road. What was the question? The principals uh, or officers of, of Corporation. I am the president and uh, treasurer, and my brother is the vice president and uh, secretary. And your brother's name is? Joaquin, J-O-A-Q-U-I-N. And are you the only two shareholders of the corporation? Yes. And it is, it is a main corporation. Peter Rich is the attorney. He's the clerk of the corporation, so uh, it is a, you know, we pay our $60 fee every year, so <laughs> we are a main corporation. <laughs> Maybe it's a misprint or a typo, but... Uh... Uh, Mr. Edstall, through the chair. Uh, while you're on the subject and a point of clarification, is uh, Mr. Anastasis' company involved in the land development itself or just in the uh, building construction? The building construction. Thank you. But not the general contract? No. Is that all? Anything else for Mr. Perez? Not for this item. No. Okay, thank you. Should I continue with item 8A? Please. Yes. Okay. Uh, public sewer facilities. I believe that uh, the town engineer's letter is attached, and I didn't repeat everything he said, but um, just, just to clarify, um, the town engineer, Fred Morin, is, is uh, working feverishly to review these plans. He received them had a basically a week to review them. Um, he normally sends us an extremely detailed letter with everything reviewed. Um, and I think it was with some difficulty that he had to hold himself back this time. And all he did this month was, was a review for completeness and is now continuing with a more detailed tactical review. And um, I didn't repeat everything he said, but he did repeat that uh, there, there are some, some additional information he would like related to the force main for the sewer system. Um, under item 8B, culverts and drainage areas. Uh, again, there were pre and post development plans, uh, drainage development plans, which the applicant had prepared, uh, failed to submit, um, submitted in, in, it has submitted by now, but they were not in time to do much of a review of them. So they are in now, they weren't in by the due date. Um, under 8C water supply and 8D hydrant locations. Um, not an item for completeness, but there was some question about how lot 15A was going to get water supply. The applicant has identified that it would be along the water, along the, the property line. 8D hydrants have, have been shown in the plans. It's just that the, the fire chief would like to see a plan that has all the fire hydrants on it so he can have a comprehensive review to see how they're located in the distance away from anything else. Um, under subsurface sewage disposal system data, uh, lot 63 is the only lot that will be a, have a subsurface disposal system. That's the lot that has frontage on Sawyer Road and is kind of separate from the entire project. And no HHE 200 form has been submitted for that lot. Uh, under item 10A, street and sidewalk data, um, the town engineer has requested that right-of-way widths for, for streets that are adjacent to the subdivision uh, be submitted in addition to the right-of-way widths for the proposed streets. Um, are there any questions up to this point? Okay. Um, items 10B up to 12B, I haven't identified any incomplete information. 
Under uh, 12B, the applicant has requested a waiver um, of a high intensity soil survey. Um, items 12C through 14, uh, no, no information has been identified as missing. Under item 15, proposed lot lines. Um, typically, the board receives information that has the lot size for each individual lot shown on the plan. We do not have a plan that, that shows the lot sizes. Under item 16, through 20B, there haven't been any items identified, or I'm assuming you'll jump in if you have any questions. Mm -hmm. um, under 21, soil erosion and sediment control plan, uh, the town engineer has requested ad additional information on, on soil erosion, and it's listed specifically in his letter, which is attached. Um, and then under item 24, community impact analysis, there were s several items that, that were requested. Um, information, additional information to be submitted on the traffic study, uh, information to be submitted on how the stumps and brush that will be generated from the, the construction of the project will be disposed of since the Public Works Director has said that they cannot be disposed of in the town's transfer station, um, and a surface restoration plan for Wells Road and Spurring Road. Both of these roads uh, in the area where the sewer lines are going to be installed are going to have be severely disrupted. and. Uh, I know that the Public Works Director has some pretty concrete ideas on what he would like done to these roads to restore them after the, the sewer lines are installed. Um, and then I have pointed out, and I think the applicant has prepared it for this evening, a phasing plan is usually something that's submitted as part of the final subdivision approval, uh, but it would probably be in the applicant's best interest to do it now since uh, one of the issues that t sometimes occurs with phasing is that while you may not have a dead-end situation as part of the whole subdivision, you may be creating temporary dead-end situations during a phase, and I have talked to the applicant about that, and we, we do need to look at that again. Uh, do you want me to just continue? Go ahead. I, I have some comments myself, uh, and I, I think it's, it, 24 is a good discussion piece for, or I'd like to discuss some. I, I don't see that as a completeness issue. I do, however, think that that's an issue I think the, the impact study is deficient in a number of different spots, and we'll want to discuss those. There's no reason not to use Cape Elizabeth demographics, not to use Falmouth um, the, the demographics to, 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 uh, as a basis of, of the community impact. There's plenty of, of demographic information available on Cape Elizabeth. Um, not necessarily to use the um, National Association of Home Builders information regarding homes use local demographics. It's this community impact. Um, but again, it's not a, a, an issue of, of completeness. It's just a, a forewarning, I think, a matter of discussion. I'd like to skip back up to 23A and 23B. Um, there, there are two items that, that I find um, that don't, that are incomplete, and, and, uh, and, and I think significantly so. And I assume that, and I straighten this up, you know, make this more clear to me. I, th I think that they are depending on a letter from Randy Blake or Richard A. Blake, Vice President of People's Heritage, to indicate technical and financial capability, and that's uh, financial capability. Um, and I don't want to seem inconsistent from a prior application. If this letter were actually to say that Juan Perez and Joaquin can't pronounce it correctly, his brother, um, if it actually says that they, uh, a review of their financial statements indicates that they are financially capable of handling this, um, I would say it, it's a complete issue to disagree with, with this being the source of that. Uh, the letter never says that. Randy Blake's a good enough commercial real estate loan officer to know not to ever write a letter that's going to be used in public that says so-and-so is financially capable of doing anything. Um, it, it says nowhere in here that they have the technical capability uh, or capacity indicating that they have this experience of having done a 95 lot or large major subdivision before. That's the, the type of information we're looking for. I apologize to the applicant if it were not made clear to you. We changed the site plan review requirement or made note in, in the ordinance indicating <coughs> that 
and it was based on this type of problem of a bank loan officer letters being mm -hmm. useless in this process um, that the town manager takes the role so it never becomes the financial um, uh, personal financial statements of the principals this board doesn't want that to be public information so I would recommend to the applicant that you submit that to the town manager he will review that it will never become part of uh, public record he makes a recommendation to the board whether um, the applicants uh, being the corporation with principles of Juan and his brother uh, are financially capable of, of handling this this, uh, uh, this subdivision the technical application needs to be drawn up specifically where does Juan and, and uh, his brother have the technical capability uh, I take it they are also going to be the general contractor uh, because that's not listed anywhere else um, if they're relying on the expertise of, of the builder which he just said he wasn't so I, I don't see that tying it in but I, I just feel that, that as a starting place we can't go past completeness based on this type of, of evidence of financial capability it's a very serious issue uh, for this town uh, and we have a vehicle for that that process to have it approved by um, the town manager <clears throat> Would you step up to the podium, please, and identify yourself? My name is Peter Anastas. I'm the proposed builder on the project of Anastas and Lonas. Um, to clear something up, to, I didn't quite hear it in the back, so I, was, I apologize. But as far as the technical expertise, as far as building the roads, our company would provide the technical expertise for the roads and for building the subdivision. Um, and that has been part of the plan from the start. And we've built a number of subdivisions uh, in Yarmouth and other communities, which we could give the board a list of if they would like. I, I think that being yeah. so, and I assume that, but when Juan said that he or, or did not say that there was a general contractor, I think we just send this road on the structural right. uh, contractor. Um, the other issue is, I think, if that's the case, then. Um, However, you're listed in as a, I think it's uh, Anastas and Lonis. Right. You need to join as co-applicant. In this case, the town would look to you. If, if we're basing this right. on your technical capability, then you join as a co-applicant because we don't want to get in a situation three years from now mm -hmm. where the builder says, I, I'm not interested in doing this anymore. We fall back to the applicant who has uh, whatever. You know, if he doesn't have that technical capability, depending on you as the builder, general contractor, I would recommend that the, the town require you join as co-applicant. Okay, and I apologize. I was a little confused, like I said in the back, by the question. But um, the, the way we have it set up, Juan and his brother own the land in a corporation. I would be, uh, my company would uh, contract to build the roads and the homes, and we have a contract in place for that now. Um, and have for some time, and that is that's the arrangement. Put it right out front, so you understand. I think in so. that case, whether you join as co-applicant uh, in, in this application, um, if if the town staff, the town manager, doesn't feel that that's a requirement, then then we simply need to know. Right. I'm familiar with your your capability right. in, in in subdivision construction, but that needs to be a part of public record. It's not sure. listed here, and that's that's the issue. Okay. I think it just goes back to the whole issue of, of just formalizing and cleaning up the whole right title and interest trail. Mm -hmm. Because when I did this, I, I checked yes on the, on the technical capability because of all the information you had submitted during the workshop process. Mm -hmm. um, but, but your firm somehow has to be pulled into this, this whole thing formally. Mm -hmm. And there may be different ways to do it. But all right. Well, we're willing to do that. I just um, I was unaware that since we weren't owners, I didn't want to overstep our bounds going the other way either. So, we have to do it. Thank you. Um, on, the, on the wetlands alteration completeness checklist, uh, the applicant has <coughs> submitted uh, 23 copies of the plans, has submitted a detailed site plan, um, has asked for a waiver on the topographic map showing the location of, of uh, slopes 
And what he's asked for is a waiver on the one-foot contour requirement, um, but there is a very detailed report on the wetland alterations in, in the binder that was done by Woodlot Alternatives, um, just to keep that in mind. On items C through F, um, down to I, stormwater runoff plan prepared by a professional engineer. Again, um, our town engineer has identified some items which he feels are missing. Um, the post, the pre and post development drainage plans, which we've now now have been submitted, um, and finally, evidence right title interest. It's it's the same thing we've been discussing before. Is uh, we need to to work on this the whole right title and interest, and finally, the evidence of pursuit of DEP and Army Corps permits. I I have walked the site with the applicant and representatives from the DEP, so I can personally attest that they know that this is happening, um, and I. I've been in contact with the applicant, and they're asking me to provide them things so that they can get their application in to DEP. Are there any questions? Any further discussion? I guess I appreciate the thoroughness with which uh, <laughs> the town planner has taken the initial cut here. Um, and particularly of, with an application of this magnitude and complexity, I really would like to have as much pinned down appropriately at the beginning because it's going to be easy enough to lose our way as we go through it anyway. Um, I guess I'd like to suggest that we, uh, my sense is that we aren't at the completeness stage at this point, and I'd like to uh, suggest that the applicant clean up all of the items that are mentioned on the town planner's memorandum, but I'd be open to other suggestions if other people feel differently. Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Mr. Elmer. Uh My general impression is that this is quite a complete application, uh, almost to a fault. Um, and I'm very glad that we had the workshop sessions because it becomes very difficult once an effort like this has been put into a project to have substantive changes to that project, and particularly when, when people, because of schedules, are required to do uh, co-applications to the DEP and the Army Corps. Uh, in the ideal world, you might... Uh, uh, get a local approval on a road alignment first and then go to the Army Corps and see if they'll permit or vice versa. Um, I think that the items, at least what I uh, heard discussed tonight, certainly aren't so onerous that they couldn't be dealt with between now and, the, and whenever we elect to have the next uh, scheduled meeting. Uh, I didn't get the impression that there was anything uh, of, of significance missing. Certainly the concerns about financial capability are something that uh, you know, you never get the bank letter. Maybe it's a, it's a, uh, eventually it's a bond, uh, intent to bond or whatever. But even that is something that, given the the uh, applicants that are before us, I don't think is something that we could, we could certainly make it a condition of their coming back to the next meeting that they would come back with the issues uh, raised by the engineer for additional information. Many of the items that were raised for re additional information have already been provided are are with the town planner. So. Um, I, I guess I'd like to see this thing. Um, I think there's going to be a fairly lengthy review process here, and I, and I, I just uh, have a hard time finding si significant items missing out of a 40-pound package that would not warrant going to the uh, next meeting with a, <coughs> with a call it substan significantly <coughs> substantially complete with a few uh, minor items, I think. Mr. Russell? Yeah, I guess I'd, I'd beg to differ with the Mr. Emery, uh, I just I, I think it's not unusual of a, for a, an application of this size to to wait you know, and get, get it cleaned up before we start. Uh, it's, it's certainly we can we can continue uh, with substantive review, I believe, um, if they meet those those criteria for um, completeness in one month. I, I think I don't I think there's no other more crucial item 
than to straighten out the issue of who's the applicant. Is that applicant technically capable of doing this? And I assume under, with the understanding that, that we've got the technical capability joining this application, however they choose to do that, <coughs> that's fine. But we, we don't have that nailed down to begin with. Uh, I, don't, I would not vote for, for completeness. Um, as far as financial capability, um, the applicants evidently have their financial statements put together as a case of delivering those to Mike McGovern so those never become public record. He takes a look at it. That's his issue. He simply sends that as a, as a recommendation to the board in letter form saying yes or no. Um, we can question that later on if it's an issue. I don't, it, it very seldom is an issue. Uh, we depend on that, uh, that recommendation. Um, as far as the HHE 200 for one lot, why not get it? To, uh, this differs from the last application that we had in that in a subdivision. It is a requirement to comply with a sewer ordinance, um, and that is it states specifically there that, that the form is required. I think it, it, we're not really slowing up the applicant. Uh, we're just saying let's get started with all this, all this cards on the table. But you would be willing uh, at the next meeting, assuming that all of the uh, uh, additional information is provided, to begin substantive review or discussion of the... Uh, Absolutely. Uh, okay. Yeah. I, I, and, well, yes. I, I was going to go so far as so we can give them some insight as we did with the prior, mm -hmm. but I, I think Not that is, is overstepping uh, what we should do. Any else? wish to make comment? I have a motion. No one else has anything else? No. Uh, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Nabuk Land Associates for a preliminary subdivision review and a wetland operation permit for Dominicus Crossing uh, an approximately 95 lot subdivision located in the area of Wells Road and Sawyer Road be deemed incomplete. I'll second that. All those in favor, please ra raise your right hand. All those opposed? It's three to two. No. Four, Four to two. two. Four to two. I think we're obligated uh, also to be specific as to what where the shortfalls were. Mm -hmm. It's just checking this legal opinion. Um, if we're not legally bound, we, we should uh, make it very clear uh, what, what items are incomplete. I, I will just start with, with the three items that, that I meant HHE 200 for lot 63, I think it is. You got that right. Fine. The, um, financial statement of financial capability, which I would suggest you go through the town manager, um, and technical capability, whatever, however you choose to restructure that so we get started in the blocks. And I'm, I'm very much in favor of being ready to uh, pursue uh, some substantial review in 30 days. I, I guess I'd just like to ask the applicant, is there any difficulty in complying with all of the things that are on here? Tell us, tell us what you can't do in the next 30 days. We, we, we came here fully realizing that we were, <laughs> as I said, this far from it. And I, I didn't want to be presumptuous and hand you stuff tonight, because we Thank do you. have the HHE 200 Thank form. You. But what we want to do is make sure that we have not just that little piece, but all those pieces so we don't dribble things in. Thank and you. hopefully, by, you know, within a week, we'll have all those little bits and pieces. <laughs> Is there anything that we've mentioned tonight that you cannot accomplish in the next 30 days that you know of? Not that I know of. So, so I, I would like to just suggest that, I mean, certainly at a minimum that the items that you've mentioned in particular, but that uh, if we can get everything that we've talked about, then I don't think we'll have any difficulty saying it's complete next time. Can I ask a question? You know, once, once we get this application deemed complete, um, could you enlighten us as to the format that we'll follow in terms of doing the substantive review? I know that you, know, you all will review it, the town planner will review it, the town staff will review it, Fred will review it, and all those pieces of information will come back in terms of memos and reports through Maureen's office. But will there, will there be a... Um, an order that we'll be reviewing the various issues, 
Uh, how, how is it likely to be structured? Or are we just taking one at a time? <laughs> yeah. I'll offer something. Yeah, I was thinking about that as you were going through the, the your presentation. You know, you know, it's been a while since we've done a major subdivision. Yeah. Um, my recollection, it, it may sound silly, is we sort of get into some type of rhythm. The, the initial items usually get identified in the first 30 days, maybe 60 days. Um, and clump those, you know, board discussion typically centers around those areas. And, and, and I don't know where that's going to come up, but um, that's historically, at least in my experience, the last eight years or so, what happens is, is that it gets identified pretty quickly. Maybe as we uncover or go work through some things, it, it's, it's never going to be a, a real quick process of, of a project this size. And I, I hope that it, we get through it as quickly as we can. Um, at the same time, I, I think, you know, they will be identified fairly early in the process and we sort of, historically, as a, as a board, have sort of say, okay, we take care of that issue, then we move on to that. About as specific as I can be. <laughs> no, and, I, and I think it's appropriate to point out, as you well know, that if something is found deemed complete, it doesn't mean that the board is in agreement with the, the plan that's in front of us. We, everything that you've requested that the ordinances require that you submit has been substantially uh, submitted. But the board can then start working with you in, in certain issues with respect to the design of the project or the code issues. This is something I, I didn't even mention, but I mean, is this, the, the applicant's chosen to, to reduce the, the, the scale of, of the, for handling as much as anything else. But there, there may be an issue when we get to a, a certain specific area where I simply can't read it. Yeah. Well, and, and we, we intend to come before you with, you know, yeah. four of these put together. Yeah, at, I, I've used this for 10 years. I, I carry this, this magnifying so I can read <laughs> small plans all the time. Yeah. So I, I, I try hard to, to, to do, to use that, but uh, there may be times when I yeah, we, When we had our DEP public hearing uh, several months ago, we had a, a rendered copy of all the plans together. You know, it, was, it occupied, you know, one of those blue panels right there. We'll probably develop something like that just so you can get into the details. Fine. Will you be looking for another site visit? <laughs> <laughs> I know you've all been out there at least once. My, my sense is on a, on a project of this complexity that it really is, is uh, imperative that, the, that, the, uh, that there be, as part of the substantive review of the project, a site walk. Uh, quite frankly, to go out there today, you wouldn't, uh, there would be no value in it other than to see the substantial trees that might be there, but you're not going to see the uh, nuances of the grading that uh, Les has worked so hard on and, and uh, the ledge outcrops and all of that. The roadway flagged uh, and whatnot. So I, I think we'll have to cross that bridge. You know, we may get a, a big January thaw here in the next couple of weeks. Right, uh, right now my, my memory is crystal clear, but that may fade as <laughs> snow goes. <laughs> but I had trouble making it across my front yard uh, this weekend, and I don't live on a big lot. It's waist deep. And my office gave me snowshoes for Christmas. It was very appropriate. <laughs> Okay. I guess we're, I think we're all set. We any, any other table, questions? I mean, if no. it's not complete, Just we can't do anything. If it's incomplete, we can't do anything. Else. Yep. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Well, and before you we close soon. the meeting, I neglected to do so something we'll earlier. So we'll be back in February, assuming we have everything yep. in order. Okay. Okay. Marine, you will need the updating sections. I'm assuming they'll just be Thank you. Before, before we close the meeting, I neglected to uh, thank Mr. McKay for uh, stepping in for me twice this evening, so thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you for easing me into this job. <laughs> <laughs> I, it, it, although I didn't say it at the time, uh, Janet had done a, a, a nice job of thanking Tom. I, individually, I'd like to say Tom, you've done a great job. Mm -hmm. so. Couple of years. Very much a pleasure. Yeah. Um, we have a motion to make one comment. Sure. The zoning ordinance rewrite committee is having a public forum tomorrow night in this room at 7:30 to discuss the Great Pond watershed proposal. 
one page of regulation, two pages of non-regulatory proposals. And I just wanted to let the rest of the board know in case they wanted to come and, and sit and listen for an hour. They are all cordially invited. What time? 7.30. Is it going to be broadcast? No. Move that the uh, meeting be adjourned. Second. <coughs> we have a, a D just we need to declare, vote on I don't think we have to vote, do we? Do we? Oh, I've already said. Well, I don't care. All those in favor. All those in favor say aye. Raise your right hand. Yeah, here. Aye, aye. They vote every, you guys vote every month to adjourn. <laughs> so you, know. you vote every month to adjourn. Some things just don't stand out in mind, you know? I know. You're talking about I didn't sleep hardly at all. The hardest part is not what's in this. Uh -huh.